Hi, everybody. This morning, I just wanted to come on for just a minute to just to show you, uh, give you an idea of what can be done with your um, slow quilting pieces, your slow stitching pieces to kind of just get them all in one place. This is a fabric journal that was created for me by a friend and um, sent this to me. And so I've had it just hanging around for a while. She had all this lace already put on it and then I put this heart on here that was sent to me by somebody else. So that's how I made the cover. But then it's got all these pages. So I just, she, all the pages were in there too, and most of, most of the stuff was already on the pages, and some of them I put added a little lace already to them. But that just gives it all these pages. And so the way I added, I affixed the pages in there was I just put a safe, three safety pins on this one. And then see this one here. So this shows the inside of the page which there's no nothing on these yet nothing on that page so I could take this page that I've been working on and I could just stitch it to the inside but what I'll do is I will first use the opposite page that has some lace on it already and I'm going to do some slow stitching right on this page and this page this is made out of just cotton just plain cotton fabric like maybe you would have a the best way to buy some just plain cotton fabric and get a big old piece is just buy a flat sheet and buy a flat sheet and um and then cut it apart. Now these pages in here are 12 inches by 10 inches. So they're, this is quite big. You do not have to go this big. But see, I'll do um, slow stitching right on these pages, just like this. And um, But then it will show on the opposite side all of my um, back you know, back stitching. And then that's when I'll take one of my, one of my projects that I have made just like this, I mean, without being in the book, and I can stitch this all the way around and have it, and then it'll cover up all those back stitchings. So, so I think that will be awesome and see, and I took each, first I was gonna put all the pages together like a signature and sew them in. But then I decided, no, I think I wanna just put each page in separately. And then I just safety pinned them in there. I just put safe, three safety pins on each one. And so I might later decide to um, do some kind of a stitch to hold them all in, but maybe not. Now see here, this one here, because it's got like a little pocket here on um, this way. This one's got some Battenberg lace already put on here. And so there's so much I can do on this page. But see, now what I can do is when I'm working, like it's, for instance on this page, I can turn this whole book like this. Now I have just that page right there. And I can be working on that page. And I still, because I make use of the solid background um, by, you know, so I can make my stitches and whatnot. But that's what I'll do is I will work on this page like this. So you can, so, you know, and then like I say, then the back of it is going to be all them background stitches. So I'll be able to, um, I'll be able to, to um, then add my, um, my already finished pages. So this book has got, it will end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 pages is what this is going to end up having. 18 pages. Um, I mean, like this is one, two, like that, see? And, and I think this is going to be awesome. I just pinned those this morning so that I can turn my pages. And this will come up kind of thick and heavy when it's done. I got to figure out a name for this book, too. But it is going to be so pretty. See how down the seams I just put three safety pins. And see that piece? I've already got that little piece um, sewn on there. And so see that how that's already sewn on there. Oh, yeah, and see, it does show. Oh, I stitched that on with the sewing machine. I probably won't be stitching anymore on with sewing machine. Um, I'll probably, it's probably going to be all hand stitched. But, um, see, so then I will finish up this. I will be finishing up and putting things in here. And then on the back, I will add uh, an, another one, uh, like something else, see? And so... This, this is, and then the book is going to get thicker and thicker and thicker. And, but I have other things, you know, that I've started. And so, like this one here I was working on. And I've worked on this one with you all a little bit. But I decided, because this is bigger than what would fit in my um, book. It's bigger. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to cut it apart. Um, I'm going to be cutting this apart. In fact, I'm going to take, like, let's see, do I have my scissor right here? Do I have my scissor? Oh, here it is. Okay. This is my new scissor. I bought myself a pair of fabric scissors because I did not have fabric scissors. So I bought myself a pair, and these ones are for fabric only. Okay, but see, now I have a, a a space right along here that I can cut that. And so I'm going to cut that because I want some smaller sections. Of, because when I was doing this one, I wasn't thinking about, I wasn't thinking about, um, about putting them in the book. I was just thinking about making stuff and so but now that I know I'm going to be adding all of my things and it'll be very eclectic nothing is going to be like matching now I do think I might make some of my um slow stitching projects like like this one that I'm working on right now it's it's like a lot of red and so and I think that's kind of cool so I put a lot of red in there but now on uh, on this one there's a lot of everything but let's see, I'm just getting it cut there. Hi, Papa. Are you uh, peeking? Yeah, I'm peeking. Okay. Papa's peeking. And um, there. So I just cut that in half. And so now this could actually go on on one side like this. It would fit just perfectly on this one side. If you're good age, do yeah, good edge detail, Papa says. And so, and I kind of like that. And then that leaves this piece, which this piece, maybe I would cut this one down right here, just down. So I'm only cutting on the muslin that I put the whole thing together with. But then see, then I've got a couple more pieces here that I still probably am going to more, do more work on these, but but then those pieces can go on another page. So, so maybe I would turn the page and, and maybe I could put this beautiful heart right here. Maybe I would just go around there with just a whip stitch with some fine thread and just whip stitch it all the way around. I might do that. And then maybe 
this little piece, maybe this little piece would fit over here, maybe. And see how pretty that would be? That would be gorgeous. And, and that could be a beginning. Then maybe I might want to write something up here because I haven't done much of the, the writing yet in my slow stitching, but I know I can because I could write out a word up here like um, love or believe and just write it out with a pen that, that the ink goes away when you heat it. And then I could just use like that back stitch we did the other day. And I could just with the back stitch go along every place where I wrote the word. And that would be pretty. I just love words and things on on our projects. And then some of the, and, and even though this is already a um, bit of lace there, see maybe this would go there too then I can add to this lace I can add um, like well right now I've got in mind like yo-yos and stuff and um, gosh I got a mess in this room why in the world somebody made it a mess but I could put a yo-yo here and then put a little stem down here and make maybe another yo-yo over here with a stem and make like flowers that are right on top of this of, of this doily and I think that would be pretty too and so when you, you know you can start with just a small piece of background and then and then like I say you don't even really need to have a background you don't even have to have a background you can you can um Let's see, I've got like this piece here. I stitched those together just with a running stitch. Each piece is just stitched together with a running stitch. And um, I didn't put it on a background. I just put the pieces together. And so, but I'm not finished with that. I'm going to do other stuff on this one too. And, um, but see, I get, I, I have multiple items together all at the same time. And then this one was a, this one here, this patch I did stitch together on the sewing machine, but then I started doing some hand stitching, slow stitching on the, um, on the seams and that's what I want to do on this piece is to finish off all of the seams with different colors of fibers threads and such and um and 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 then that will make another page see because that one's done on its own then I can put that one like this page here will probably have all kind of um stitches showing on the back because I'll be putting things on the front of the page on the opposite side of the page and um and then and then um and then this will cover up them stitches and then I'll probably just stitch around and maybe put just a few stitches in the middle to kind of quilt it on there to hold it on there but then another thing if you do make something that is wider than your page you can put on like like if you were to make if you were to make like a I have other things too that I've got so many things started like this I just love this I'm having so much fun with this um, like like here like if you were to make a piece like this 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 long th now this will fit on a page but say you have it longer than the page wider than the page it is long you can put this much over it and just like you would do in a junk journal where you have flip outs 
you can have fabric flip outs so this could be a fabric flip out you could have both sides done and then when you put it in stitch it here and have this page this part as a flip out if that makes sense to you it makes perfect sense to me and so then as you're going through the book then you'd have things to look at that are flip outs and that would so you can put even larger pieces on your page but I'm thinking boy sometimes I shouldn't be left alone to think too long because you never know what's gonna happen your mail already run it's time to lower your rates not your expectations okay let's throw that in the garbage and so anyhow but I have like this here piece is is going to be beautiful on both sides this piece is going to be beautiful on both sides because it's already a, a, a pieced piece a pieced a piece that's pieced together here but then I started borrow stitching pieces on the back so both sides of this will be will be um finished so I won't want to cover either one of them up so probably what I'll do with this is I might when I put it in the book I might only stitch it on one side and then the whole thing will flip open like this or I might just pit just um, just add it to the top of the page and stitch it there so the whole thing can be lifted up and then you've got a whole page underneath still to put beautiful things now you all as I'm doing my projects you'll see this this journal grow you will see all the you will see how it grows along with me and it there's not going to be any theme except beautiful that's going to be the theme the theme is going to be called beautiful and but yes I'm and like when I made I've made like this here and this is put on the backing this is just one of my crazy quilt blocks and it's put on a backing so I could cut this whole thing off like this and have two pieces and and slow stitch on these two pieces and then have them put in the book somewhere and so then as you see the book then in time will get all beautiful and thick it'll be beautiful and it'll be thick I gotta come up with an see I love my name I named my sewing machine Freya I love that and um, I got to look up some more names to see what I'm gonna name my book but my books gonna have a name too but then when you make a book oh and another thing let me tell you if you go to thrift shops if you go to thrift shops look at their placemats thank you sweetie um, look at their placements now this is just an old placemat that was at the thrift store but um, and looks like it looked like somebody made it but there was a tag in there so it might have been purchased this way but somebody did make it but now when you fold that in half you hold fold that fabric placemat in half there is your book cover and it's finished and so then you can get your pages and just make them a little bit smaller than this um, just a wee bit smaller than the placemat and then you have and, and placemats are pretty much standard in size so here this would give you a book that was nine and a half well it'd be about the same size as mine nine and a half by twelve the the um, finished size and but oh the things that you could and I love this because it's it's old it's worn it's been washed many times and it's um it's just very rustic looking so this might end up being a book as well um, a fabric junk journal a fabric scrap journal a fabric slow stitch scrap journal but see with pages put in here this would be so awesome this would be so awesome just like this so 
if you're going, if you do get yourself out to um, out to thrift shops. Oh, I haven't combed my hair yet this morning. Got this earache. Oh, Papa put some stuff in there with a um, and it's got cotton in it. So I'm hearing out of this side only. And it's and, oh, I'm glad when this earache. I think it all it is is um, um. I'd probably need an ear lavage where they just clean your ear out and get all the wax out of it. That's probably all it needs. But, yeah, I didn't comb my hair. Look at this doily. That is pretty. I could put that right on the front of this one. Yeah, but that that's all I wanted to show you this morning was ideas of how to um, get a journal started. Like I say, that one that I'm using was made not by me. That was made by somebody more professional than me not me <laughs> but um but you can come up with so many beautiful beautiful things on um, and just to make your your journal and like i say these look at the thrift shops look in the in the um section where they have have um linens and things and see if there's any fabric placemats i know in our um thrift shop there usually is a lot I don't get to go to them too often anymore but there um there is a lot of placemats always in their in their store and so but that is a real good idea of how to get started then your cover is already finished all you have to do is add your embellishments to it add pages in it and like I said I just I just pinned mine in. I put mine in on pins, just on safety pins. So, and with the safety pins, if I want to, I could undo the pins, take the page out, and work on the page, and then pin it back in. And so that's what one thing I like about the safety pins. So, um, I'm going to now, um, I'm, uh, I'm going to read. I'll probably go lay back down again. Um, I have a couple of orders i got to get ready to mail. I didn't get them done today because I've been kind of... This earache has just got me slowed down, really. And so I'm going to go ahead and I want to read to you. I always want to read. I just always want to read. And I read more for myself. And um, because I need to have inspiration. I need... To have positivity in my mind, in my life, and in my head, and in my brain, and so, which my life is positive, my family is positive. There's some, I try to keep negativity out, completely out, and I um, and I um, try to find more positive things. So this is the book. You are stronger than you know. Words of hope and encouragement for someone living with a chronic illness. And, um, okay, here, I'm going to go to the beginning of the book again, and I'm going to, this one here, it says, a little pep talk. So I'm going to give you a little pep talk this morning. Repeat after me. I am strong. I am special. I can do anything. Sometimes life throws hurdles in your path. But we just have to keep on going full speed ahead, looking inside ourselves for the courage to leap over them and never look back. You are strong. You are a strong and remarkable person. And you can do anything. May you always believe in yourself. And that was written by Natalie Evans. And the, the, the three things. It says at the beginning, repeat after me, it says, I am strong. I am special. I can do anything. And that is so true. I want to, I was just watching Becca, Rebecca. She's got a, um, a channel. Rebecca is a big inspiration to me. I think her channel is just Rebecca. But this morning she was on live with Mrs. Gigi and they were doing a uh, art project that they do every Friday. And um, 
Rebecca is in a wheelchair. She has to get around. I mean, she had an accident um, a while back, which left her in a wheelchair. And she is so inspirational to me because not being able to walk, you know, having to rely on a wheelchair, that's a big hurdle to get over in your lifetime. And so, but she is one that just listening to her, you can feel her strength. You know she is special. And yeah, she can do anything. And so, when we take those lifetime stumbling blocks that we all have, we all have some worse than others, some more visible than others, because those are, there are all of those um, invisible chronic problems that people can look at you and they think oh that person is just fine why is that person parked in a handicap zone you know I hear that so much you know and but because a lot of people have those invisible chronic illnesses and um and that's that's a real problem for the person with that cr invisible chronic problem um because then you're thinking, you're thinking maybe, what will people think of me? I'm parking in this handicap zone and I look just fine and I'm young and, but yeah, it's, you know, we can't, we can't be judgmental. And so just always remember you are strong, you are special and you can do anything. And what other people think is their problem then that, that's another thing about um about um uh what is that word um acceptance somebody can say to you something that isn't exactly right and they might say oh you know oh one of the things i was talking with a friend just the other day about commercials come on television all the time um or in your videos and whatnot, and 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 they and it's all about exercise and diet and whatever, which to some people, some people take that as, well, how do you know that I need a diet? And I've tried to diet and I'm still over um, overweight and that kind of thing, and um, and and so then they almost convince you to feel bad about yourself they they almost I'm talking about me, myself personally really and so there is the acceptance part you can accept that as to be true for you or you can not accept that to be true for you and just just not accept it just say that's your problem, not mine, or whatever, you know. Somehow, I don't know how exactly to put it into words. But you don't have to accept that negative stuff into your spirit. Just keep the positive things in your spirit and know that you are special, you are strong, and you can do anything. Okay, I'm going to quit running my mouth now because now it's almost a half an hour and I was only going to be on here in a minute. And so I ask God to watch over you every step you take, every move you make. And make yourself a little fabric journal. If you've got the, if you've got what you need and you don't need much, just make yourself a fabric journal where you can put your slow stitching right in it or you can add your slow stitching to it and just flipping through them pages will be amazing amazing i love you guys thank you for watching and i'll see you again if not before i'll see you on monday god bless god bless and here we go i need to go comb this hair <laughs>